Back in 1855, at the request of Napoleon III, the wines of Bordeaux were classified in advance of an exposition to be held in Paris. This was so the very best French wines could be highlighted at that exposition. The criteria for classification included the reputation of the producers, but was based primarily on transaction prices over an extended period of time. Given the fact that the 1855 classification of Bordeaux remains largely unchanged today and is still fairly accurate, it may surprise you to learn that it was created in less than two weeks. In all, there were 61 Bordeaux wine producers that were classified in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux. 18 of them were classified as fifth growths. These fifth growth Bordeaux producers include two of my favorite producers, as well as a number of producers that offer exceptional quality for the price. Many of the fifth growth Bordeaux producers have greatly increased the quality of their wines, especially recently, and would be rated much higher if there were a reclassification conducted today. Due to the large number of fifth growth Bordeaux producers, I'm going to discuss them in two parts. So I'll cover nine producers in each of the two videos. And these are intended to be standalone videos, so it doesn't matter which order you watch them in. Located in the Poyac Appalachian, Bataille is a historic producer that traces its roots way back to the 1400s. In 1942, this property was divided into two parts so that each of two brothers could get their share of ownership in the assets. The other portion of the assets became Haute Bataille, and some of the original assets remained with Bataille. Today, Bataille has around 60 hectares of vines that are planted to 70% Cabernet Sauvignon, 25% Merlot, 3% Cabernet Franc, and 2% Petit Verdot. These vines average around 40 years of age. In 2006, there was a complete overhaul of the Bataille winemaking facilities, which helped to increase the quality of the wines in later vintages. Bataille produces around 25,000 cases of wine per year, so you should be able to find this one without too much difficulty. This is one that you can enjoy fairly young, especially for a Poyac, with a substantial decant, but it's certainly much better if you can give it seven to eight years of additional bottle age post-vintage. My preferred strategy with Bataille is to consider purchasing this one in strong vintages. So certainly vintages like 2009, 2010, 2016, 2018, 2019, and 2020 are definitely all worth considering. The 2020 vintage, for example, was highly acclaimed and yet sells for an extremely reasonable $65 per bottle in the United States. So certainly excellent quality for the price. Next up is Obataille. As mentioned, the Obataille vineyard was created back in 1942 when it received some property from the Bataille estate. Then in 1951, Obataille acquired an additional 15 hectares of vines from Duart Milon. As such, the current holdings are right around 41 hectares or so. These vineyards are located in an excellent area, very close to Lynchbage and pichon le and Latour. The 41 hectares of vines are planted to around 62% Cabernet Sauvignon, 36% Merlot, and 2% Petit Verdot. The Obataille wines mature for around 20 months in 40% New French oak. The Obate wines have been overlooked in the past, but that's rapidly coming to an end because in 2017, Obate was acquired by the owners of Chateau Lynchbach. Since that acquisition, quality has improved dramatically. And from 2018 through the present, Obate wines are some of the best ever wines that have been produced by that estate. The 2019, for example, received 395 point scores from well known critics and yet sells for only around $50 or $60 per bottle. In a pinch, you can enjoy this wine young with a healthy decant and a meal, but it's certainly much better if you can give it about 7 to 10 years of additional bottle age, and it should drink with no problem for another 10 years thereafter. Located in the Margot Appalachian, Dozak is a historic producer that dates way back to 1622. There was an ownership change about 10 years ago, and as is often the case following an ownership change, there was an increase in quality. And so for this producer, you definitely want to look for vintages beginning with 2015 and continuing to the present. This producer also embraces modern technology, as in 2016, it actually invited all its Facebook friends to come and help with a harvest. 
The 2019 vintage was particularly strong and may be the very best wine that's been produced by this estate. The 2019 bottling is a blend that consists of 73% Cabernet Sauvignon and 27% Merlot. And despite the quality of that wine, it still sells for a very reasonable $50 a bottle or so. So definitely one that offers very high quality for the price. This is a very vibrant and expressive wine. Descriptors often include black currant, violets, spice, earth, and chocolate. This is definitely a wine that you can enjoy on the younger side, especially with a healthy decant, but it should cruise in the cellar for up to 20 years or so. Located in the Poyac Appalachian, Aubage Liberal has around 30 hectares of vines that are planted to three quarters Cabernet Sauvignon and one quarter Merlot, and which average about 35 years of age or so. Aubage Liberal matures around 20% of its wine in amphora, and the rest of its wine is matured for 14 to 18 months in about 40% new French oak. The Aubage Liberal vineyards were certified biodynamic beginning in 2019, and the 2019 and 2020 vintages are probably two of the strongest vintages ever for this producer, and certainly the strongest vintages in recent memory. But despite that quality, I was able to find the 2019 vintage on shelves for as little as $45 per bottle. So definitely shop around for this one, and you can potentially have an excellent buy on your hands. This is a wine, however, that is quite structured on release. So it's definitely much better wine and offers a better drinking experience with 6 to 10 years of bottle age. It probably peaks at around year 10, and it will continue to evolve for probably 2 to 3 decades thereafter. Grand Prix Le Coast is a historic producer that's located in the Poyac Appalachian, and which dates back hundreds of years. In the 1750s, the owners at that time sold a portion of their vineyards to Pierre Ducasse, and that led to the creation of Grand Prix Ducasse, which is also a fifth growth Bordeaux producer that I'll be discussing momentarily. Grand Prix Le Coast has 55 hectares of vines that are planted to 75% Cabernet Sauvignon, 20% Merlot, and 5% Cabernet Franc. Both the vineyards and the winery have been renovated and upgraded substantially in the past 15 years or so. The vineyards for Grand Prix Le Coast are located in an outstanding area as they're very close to Ponte Canet and Lynchbage. This producer makes classic, age-worthy wines, and some of my favorite historic vintages are from 1982, 1990, 2000, and 2005. Certainly 2009 and 10 are great as well. And it's been on an even more impressive hot streak more recently, beginning with about the 2014 vintage. The 2022 futures are also highly regarded, and they sell for a very reasonable $79 a bottle or so. So this producer definitely offers exceptional quality for the price point. One of the reasons for the high quality of the Grand Prix Lacoste wines is the fact that they use an extremely strict selection now. They use only about 60% of the harvest for the top wine, and the rest of the fruit goes into the second wine. So that certainly has elevated the quality of the top wine. If you're interested in wine recommendations, wine collecting strategies, and learning more about wine, please do subscribe to my channel. I've been collecting wine for more than 15 years and also have a level four diploma from the WSET. So I have both formal certification as well as substantial practical knowledge from the School of Hard Knocks. In 1750, Pierre Ducasse purchased some vineyards from Poyac based Grand Prix Le Coste. And so this led to the creation of Grand Prix Ducasse. Today, Grand Prix Ducasse has around 40 hectares of vines in Poyac that are planted to 63% Cabernet Sauvignon and 37% Merlot. They've been gradually increasing the percentage of Cabernet Sauvignon to add more structure and complexity to the wines. These vineyards are not in one block, however. Rather, they're scattered throughout the Poyac Appalachian. Some of them are located near Mouton and Lafitte. Others are near Pichon Baron, and still more of their vineyards are located closer to Lynchbage. These vines average around 30 years of age, and the wines are matured for about 18 months in 50% new French oak. In 2013, Grand Prix du Cas hired a consultant from famed right bank producer Angelus, and this consultant has implemented a number of upgrades in the winemaking. Among other things, they started using optical sorting equipment to make sure that they have a more strict selection process, and this has resulted in big improvements in the wine, beginning with the 2014 vintage. So I definitely would not buy anything before 2014, 
And my favorite vintages for Grand Prix de Passe are 2016, 2018, 19, and 20, and the 2022 futures also look promising. Nevertheless, this is an outstanding value, as I found some selling on the shelves for as little as $45 a bottle. This is a very structured and powerful Poyac wine, however, so it's definitely one that will benefit from 8 to 10 years of additional bottle age post-vintage before you start enjoying it. Chateau Croisé Bage is the next fifth growth Bordeaux producer that I'll be discussing. Croisé Bage is located in Poyac, not so far from Lynch Bage and Grand Prix Le Coste. Croisé Bage has around 30 hectares of vines that are planted to 54% Cabernet Sauvignon, 38% Merlot, and 4% Cabernet Franc. And these vines average around 35 years of age or so. Croisé Bage does not use the same strict production methods that many classified growth Bordeaux producers utilize. For example, they have much higher yields, and they even harvest about half their fruit using machines. In the winery, they mature the wines for about 12 months in 25% new oak. I will say, however, that quality has gotten much better beginning with the 2018 vintage, and the wine sells for a very reasonable $40 a bottle in the United States. The 2020 vintage is definitely one that was well received by critics, and so you may want to keep an eye out for that one. The four vineyards were planted on the property that is now used for the Chateau Belgrave estate. This property used to be used as a hunting lodge for Louis XIV. We're in the Omedoc, and we're very close to the Saint Julien border, very close to Bechevel, and also Lagrange. Belgrave has around 59 hectares of vines that are planted to 46% each of Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot and 4% each of Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot. Michel Roland is the consultant, and they produce around 20,000 cases of wine per year. This is a producer that's definitely gotten much stronger since the 2015 vintage, and they also had solid efforts in 2009 and 2010. But my favorite vintages are probably 2019 and 2020. The 2022 futures are also highly regarded and selling for only around $37 so you may want to give those some consideration as well. One of my favorite Bordeaux producers of any classification is Ponte Canet. While Ponte Canet is a fifth growth in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux, they've been on an absolute tear, especially since about the 2009 vintage, and are now widely regarded as a super second. So if there was a reclassification of Bordeaux, they would probably be a second growth, and in many vintages, the quality certainly rivals that of the first growths. This upward trajectory began in 1994 when Alfred Tesseron took over, and there was a gradual ascent, but it really picked up in the late 2000s. What is it that makes the Ponte Canet wines of such high quality? Well, for starters, they're located in an excellent area in Poyac. Their neighbors include Mouton and Lafitte. So certainly outstanding terroir. They also put a ton of emphasis into their viticultural practices. In 2010, Ponte Canet became the first Bordeaux producer to achieve organic certification, and they also use biodynamic farming practices in the vineyard as well. And in fact, during my visit in the 2012 time period, I saw horses working in the vineyard. Ponte Canet has around 81 hectares of vines that average about 45 years of age. In addition to their impressive viticultural practices, they also use some impressive techniques in the winery. For example, they use parcel-by-parcel -parcel vinification. Beginning in 2017, they actually began destemming all their grapes by hand, which is extraordinarily rare. Most wineries use a destemmer. With respect to the maturation process, they've also placed a greater emphasis on the purity of the fruit by cutting back on the percentage of new French oak. For example, about 75% of the wine is matured in 50% new French oak, and then a quarter of the wine is matured in amphora. And this amphora comes from clay and gravel that they find on the property and that they use to create the amphora. So that's certainly a very impressive as well. When it comes to my favorite vintages for Ponte Canet, certainly 2000 and 2005 are very enjoyable, and you can't go wrong with the back-to-back -back perfect vintages of 2009 and 2010. 
although those are definitely the highest priced wines from Ponte Canet that you'll find in the secondary market. You can also buy with confidence from 2014 to the present, and in that time period, my favorite vintages are probably 2016 and 2018. This is a wine that you can typically find for around $125 to $135 on release, and in strong vintages, as mentioned, the quality can definitely rival that of the first gross, despite the fact that it sells for a fraction of the price of those wines. I will caution you, however, that this is not a wine that you want to enjoy on the young side, and I tend to give it at least 10 years or so, as it definitely benefits and gains some additional complexity with some additional bottle aging on it. 